All right, this is Lee with LA 3D Printer Repairs here to talk to you about uh, some assembly tips for the MK3S extruder. So MK3S extruder is different than the MK3 extruder. MK3 extruder um, uses like a little laser mouse sensor and it gets dirty. This is one we just pulled out and this is probably one of the cleanest ones I've seen. Um, so yeah, anyway, new, the new mechanism works by uh, interrupting a IR sensor, so it's basically an IR interrupter sensor, very common technology. So when the filament goes in, it deflects a metal ball, which is captured by this piece, and that deflects and it triggers the sensor, just like that. Not very difficult. And it's also much easier on the system because the system just sees it as a digital input, either the film is there or not there. And um, it's also you know retained with magnets, so there's no spring to wear out, which is kind of neat. Anyway, so a couple little tips on putting this together. Um, I, I do a lot of these, and um, mm, mm, I'm not going to say my method is better, uh, but my method does seem to be faster and a little bit more optimized than the Prusa method, so let's just hit it here. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to prep your parts. You're going to go ahead and stick your uh, square nuts in here and here, and you're going to go ahead and prep your duct with the square nut there, and you're going to prep this part, which if you have this part, you should reprint it with the new version. This is the original R4 or C1 version with a very thin piece right here. The new part is the R5, or I think C2, and it's got a much thicker bit right here, which is on the exhaust of the fan. That would tend to droop. I don't have a, a droopy example here for you, but I could probably pull one if I wanted to. Anyway, so you're going to square nut that and then just prep all these. You know, you're going to sink all of your hex nuts. There's one there, two there, which I've already got prepped here, and then two here, which I haven't prepped. Yes, I have. Okay, cool. So once you've got your hex nuts sunk here, your hex nuts sunk here, and you have to make absolutely sure that you sink your square nuts here, be doubly sure that you've sunk this square nut all the way. If It needs to be sunk to the point where you can't see it. In fact, to be best prepared, I like to prepare all the top stuff at first. You know, you can go ahead and attach the hat, attach the sensor, attach the magnets, attach the flag. Now, as far as the flag goes and the magnets, that can be a little bit tricky. So let me give you a little tip. I've got one here. I've got the flag ready. Let me just go ahead and drop the flag in there. You're going to want to use an 18, not a 20. I know they're kind of hard to tell the difference between, but make sure you use the right one. And you don't want to bottom this out. Just get it, get it close enough where the flag still moves freely. You're going to grab your magnets. Okay. And you're going to take them and set them up like a little T that. I'm going to take the small one, go ahead and jam it in there, and then as soon as you kind of take the other one off, without leaving the orientation, if you jam that in, bang, whoop, these parts are printed by me so they're not quite as tight, but that would do it. See, that's backwards. It flipped itself. But anyway, that little T thing helps you get it kind of jammed in here because it can be a little bit tough. And it also helps you keep the orientation. Do make sure it's not doing this. This is not correct. If they're attracting, that's not going to work. They need to be repelling like that. Anyway, that was just a tip on how to get those magnets in there. I'll fix that later. Anyway, as far as final assembly, you're going to go ahead and get this guy. Slap it down like that. Run your filament sensor through it. Like so. And then you can go ahead and it doesn't need much slack, just enough to kind of bend back. And then what I do is I go ahead and take my entire built front assembly, go ahead and connect it. And then I go ahead and pop it right on top, making sure that I'm not pinching the cable. I go ahead and use a 45 right in the top to align everything. Grab two tens, align the holes. One, two, Wrench those down. Much easier to do without the hot end in the way. So now we've got our essentially our, our main hot end body ready to go. Now we can take our actual extruder hot end, jam it in there. And then, you know, yeah, I've got the filament loaded. You can actually change the PTFE with the filament already in there. Don't worry about that. You can just slide it around it. It's not really that big of a deal. But another thing is, if you're changing your PTFE, you don't want it to be free like that. You want to go ahead and pull it up, 
push it, pull the ring up and push the tube down at the same time so it's locked in. Very important. Okay, so anyway, let me go ahead and pull it down a little bit here so we can have the hot end cables kind of hanging off the back there. And I'll just jam that up in there. I cut it a little bit loose. I, I mean, I'll unload it when I'm done, but ideally I would like it to be sticking out of the top. No big deal. Um, do a cursory alignment on your motor gear, and then a little, another little tip here before you finalize the uh, this guy. Push. So this has a little bit of play in it. If it's over here, your drive gear could bind against the filament. So make sure you kind of press it, you know, towards the gear. Kind of just, just put your finger on the outside while you're tightening these. Just to keep the filament pathway aligned correctly. Don't worry too much about the final alignment of this. We're just going to slap this on here. Boom. And then with this prepped with the, with the 45s in there, we can go ahead and jam this in. Bang, bang. At this point, we can go ahead and fix these. Set the correct alignment of our block. Boom, now we're mostly there. At this point, I like to go ahead and secure the motor. That clamps everything and gets the motor ready for, and gets the gear ready for alignment. And then I do my final cinching of the extruder gear here. And I always kind of make sure I've got a good angle on it where I'm not gonna round that guy out. In fact, I can get rounded out, that's not a good day. Anyway, <clears throat> with that all set to go, I kind of flip it over on this side, wrap my motor wire, jam it in here with enough kind of room over, under, up and in, just like that. Don't worry about that guy. We're going to finish that in a bit here. Fan. Not to a fan. Label goes towards the inside. I like to loop it so that the wires... This guy's been... I like to loop it so that the wires kind of go out, out and down back. And then if you give yourself some length, you can just kind of go in about here and then just kind of tilt up into place you can use the edge of the fan to kind of cram it up into where it goes making sure that the motor wire is not hung behind but you do have some relief here and you're going to grab 114 here here Your lower right is a 20 because that retains the fan duct. So I kind of feel underneath for when it starts coming out. Get my duct ready. Get that squared in properly. If it's not squared, it will bind. I kind of go a little bit slower to make sure that we're not binding. Galling up that square nut. I will back it out and restart that happens and boom nice and secure so at this point we're mostly done our left side is done at this point we only need to throw on the fan the pinda and the print fan uh fan yeah print fan and pinda that's it we're done so print fan sits behind the pinda so we're going to go ahead and do that first go ahead and push that in there we're going to use you can use a 20 on the top i use an 18 as long as you sink the nut a 20 or uh, 18 will retain it just fine. And then you will need to use a 20 for here. Just kind of pull it in, get that in there. Grab yourself a hex, kind of you know, just get it behind there. Hold it with your finger. Boom. Now get this aligned. I like to keep my wires nice and straight so the negative is going to be towards the top. It should be coming straight out. 
give it some nice relief, just like that. And then the Pinda retains that. So Pinda, so whoop, like that. That's what you want, okay? Just like that. And you want to have enough pulled back so that this isn't blocking the door. So I'm just going to jam that in here. Routing the cable on top. And then I like to go ahead and set my pin to height well below the nozzle just in case. A 10 is going to retain the pinda. At this point we can go ahead and throw on the door uh, making sure that your drive gear is tight. And then a 45 sort of firmly but not completely wrenched down holds in the extruder door. And then lastly, our idler spring, which is one from two in the old design, goes on the other side. And then here, you only want to turn it just slightly past flush. Three to four threads exposed on the other side with a properly sunk hex nut is about all you need. And that's it. Whole extruder's built. Last things to do, we got two uh, zip ties that need to go through there and uh, four uh, square nuts that need to get sunk. One, two, three, and four. But that's it. This guy's ready to rock. Um, uh, filament sensor, um, you may need to trim uh, if it uh, doesn't actuate properly. Uh, sometimes the, there's a little extra meat right there, just where it enters the, the trigger. And you can trim that off a little bit if it's uh, unreliably triggering. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I hope your build's going good. Um, if not, let us know, or let Prusa know, and they'll be happy to help you. But uh, MK3S is a good upgrade, and I highly recommend it. All right, y'all. Cheers. Thanks for watching.